I think it's baby mama now, not just girlfriend. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that is the worst thing it's horrendous, ever. isn't it? Oh, my God. I hate that so much. Baby <laughs> mama. Oh, fuck off. That's so grim. Welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of nothing. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as Footy from Afar, and with me as always is a very tired looking but very proud looking Chuck Bailey. Yeah, to say I look tired is kind of an understatement. Yeah, Chuck, any uh, anything going on lately? Or... <laughs> Not much really, mate. Not really much. Um... Went for a walk, had a cat, you know. Cool. Went and got the cat that she was running about in the car park today. That was fun. And uh, had a a bloody child. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Less than 24 hours and he's podcasting with us. Insane. It's, I tell you what, genuinely, genuinely, as you said that, that is 24 hours (laughs) to the minute, to the minute that she was born. Wow. You missed her first big life milestone already. Look at that. (laughs) Oh, no, don't worry. I already cleaned like four nappies full of shit and I gave her some beer, but don't tell her mother because she wasn't looking. (laughs) No uh, No, Lithuanian Jägermeister to to put (laughs) her There's still a little bit. I genuinely contemplated that. I just thought. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm sure Ian will cut that part or child services will be knocking on your door. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Don't feed your children liquor, guys. Don't do it. No. Uh, chuckling in the background and he's already chimed in a bit, but I want to introduce him. Super producer Ian Stimson. How are you? Hey Ian, how many kids have you had in the last 24 hours? I I haven't passed on any genetic material in the last uh, (laughs) eight years. (laughs) Uh, Hashtag married life, huh? Yeah, not outside of a tissue. Yeah, exactly. There it is. (laughs) I was going to go for sock, but that works just as well. As those of you out in Mopland, I'm sure are aware because you're suffering through the same thing we are right now. It is an international break, so there's not much football to talk about, which is going to make this a fun time mailbag extravaganza. Woo! (laughs) Mailbags! So we're just going to run through a quick news segment, a couple of stories that have been in the headlines lately, uh, then take it straight into the listener questions and keep it nice and short so Chuck can get back to changing dirty nappies. (laughs) We wouldn't want to keep you away from that. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. I really do appreciate it. Well, let's get right to it with our rapid, rapid, rapid fire news. Lead story tonight Usain Bolt done a goal. Done, done two goals for done two goals. Is it? Central Coast Mariners against sub. I mean, it was it was a trial friendly match, and it was it was in Australia and I thought at first it might have been an A-League game but it's not it was like some terrible team and and funnily enough like he did especially his first goal like it was actually quite a good strike but funnily enough he got it by outpacing the defender if you could, <laughs> if you could believe it, it. <laughs> I wouldn't believe it I'd love to see him actually go up against Adama Traore if, if you could believe no uh, forget it he's literally <laughs> the fastest man in the world Li- no, like, I understand, but categorically. Um, <laughs> running on a sprinting track is different from running on a football field with cleats, right? Like I saw um, this really amazing special a couple of years ago of like professional athletes and putting them against each other in different situations and just showing like how good they are at the specific things they do. Right. And they had Cristiano Ronaldo go on a dead sprint against a sprinter. He obviously lost, but then they had them run through a football course like with cones and and he destroyed the guy who was like a, an Olympic sprinter and it yeah. wasn't even close. So, like, just being pure fast on the sprinting track, it doesn't necessarily translate. Yeah, but trust me, when you're hoofing long balls over the back of the defense, it really does translate. <laughs> yeah, we'll give him a go at Peter, bro. Yeah. Is there a more perfect name for someone who's very fast than Bolt? Like, <laughs> is he crazy? He was just made for it, wasn't it? 100% made for it. I bet you he could eat 60 chicken nuggets, no problem. Yeah, didn't he live off just chicken nuggets during the Beijing Olympics? Well, there was there was a story that that morning of the race, he he like woke up, went to McDonald's, had some nuggets, did a bit of training, went back to McDonald's, <laughs> had a few more nuggets, won the Olympic gold medal. <laughs> like, yeah, broke like the world record. Yeah, and then, I think 
the, the interview for this I saw was on Top Gear over here. And Jeremy Clarkson was just amazed. He's like, so you're literally saying McDonald's won you a gold medal. He's like, well... I mean, they are a sponsor of the Olympics, so it does make sense. This is true. <laughs> yeah, I bet they weren't too upset to hear that. No, and he was actually drinking Coca-Cola during the race, too. Yeah, stopped halfway through and did, like, the Diet Coke break. Yeah, he opened... It was like... <laughs> blah, 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 just the music, the music <laughs> came on. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Ah. <laughs> oh, just has to do it for the sponsorship. And when I have a lot won. of chicken nuggets, I am not moving around fast. I am on the couch for the rest of the day, so more power to him. In between the couch and the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight to the toilet. I, I do make a bolt for the toilet. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> uh, moving right along. Uh, Christian Benteke, injury out for the remainder of 2018. Chuck, are you sad? Um, I kind of, yeah, a bit. I don't know. I think it, it's very much like, is the grass greener? Is Should we be longing for the return of a guy who scored about four goals in the last year? Um, should we be getting excited that Connor Wickham's coming back, even though he's basically got no Christ, legs? Christ, I forgot about him. Jeez. Yeah. Connor yeah. Wickham's back, guys. Scored against Dulwich Hamlet. One, like, that one amazing run where he was like fantasy gold for a month. Yeah, and then he, never yeah again. he he always does that. He just comes out of nowhere, is great, yeah. and then just gets injured and is gone for a year. I think this injury he's been gone for about it's got to be close to two seasons now, because he just he'd just come back and he'd be in training, and then something else would happen, and he'd just be gone again. I really feel bad for the guy. Do you think this will push him to make a purchase in January? I think they have to, really, because I don't see Jordan Ayew isn't really doing much at the minute but then it, the whole team isn't really Benteke Wickham they're of a similar mold as is Surlot and you know even though we paid the money for him it just he still isn't playing even with Benteke out they're playing Jordan Ayew over Surlot so I think they kind of have to but I think it's also that we need to play the right team and just yeah just generally just not be shit just get better at our jobs just don't be shit Palace yeah. simple as that and uh, I know you might have been a bit busy today, Chuck, but um, the news is as well that Zaha is being assessed on his return because of a, he's aggravated a groin problem when he's been off on international duty. Oh, no, that's bollocks. That's the Sky Sports thing that came out like after he'd already they're saying, oh, he's been withdrawn from yeah. a game that he already played. Well, I don't know. Ben Dinnery went with it. Well, <laughs> to be fair, we were losing with him, so... <laughs> Who are we to contradict the at Ben Dinnery? The the Dinnery. God, this weekend just got shit. I was looking forward as well. I was going to sit down with my daughter. I was going to sit down with my daughter for the first time and watch Palace Everton. Actually, you know what? I still will because it will really prepare her for the disappointment of shit that it, it is might be, supporting this It might be this bollocks. By the club. time this comes out, it might, it might be bollocks. Well, you got a couple of years before she remembers anything anyway, so... You know, they can get their bad seasons out of the way yeah, exactly. and as long as they're competing for the Champions League. Mate, in a couple I'm, pre- years. I'm pretty sure my dad was thinking that in the 60s. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we can get a few bad seasons out of the way. Yeah. So so are you officially going to make her suffer the life of a Palace fan? Oh, fuck You're not yes. going to let her choose her own way like uh, Stimmer seems to be doing? Well, you say I'm letting him choose his own way. I'm only taking him to Peterborough games. I'm not sort of I'm I'm not letting him know that it's even an option to support anyone else. So I'm not really letting him choose his own way. Yeah, Finley Finley doesn't actually know that there's anything outside of the city limits of Peterborough. Nope. Um, <laughs> nope. There's no you won't find an atlas nor a map in the Stimson household. <laughs> Other than no. Korean uh prison work army work camps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's, he's aware of those. It's yeah. just Peterborough and death camps. That's all there yeah. is. Well, you know who could do a job for Palace to transition to our next news story is uh, Alexander Mitrovic scored two goals in recent international friendlies. He's red hot for a promoted club, too. How good is Mitro? Mitro is on fire. Next. <laughs> right along. Uh, let's see. What else do I got? Oh, I got one. Your boys. It's coming home. England beats Spain. Oh, that's the thing that happened. It's coming home. Yeah, I did. did you guys watch I, the match? I, I no, I was in a delivery room. <laughs> well, I, I guess I should say, Ian, did you watch the match? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. And uh, so he was I'm also so- in a delivery room. He was there with me, <laughs> just giving him more support. He was helping with the breathing exercises. Yeah, 
shoulder rubs, all that sort of thing. It was lovely. Shoulder rubs, yeah. hand jobs. Yeah, I did I did watch it um in stunned silence for most of the first half. I, I couldn't believe it. And uh it was brilliant to see Sterling uh, absolutely smashing it. And uh yeah, I couldn't I could not believe it in the first half. It was just all all of a sudden I was suddenly all about the UEFA Nations League. Always never yeah. doubted it. Great competition. Uh England Croatia was boring. England yeah. beat Spain. How the fuck did that happen? Move on. Yeah. Yeah, if you were Sterling, what would your celebration be? I'd go buy my mum another house and really send the Sun newspaper into a fucking meltdown. <laughs> Did you see that? There was a good comparison about because Phil uh, Foden bought his mum a house. Yes. And the, the difference in the coverage with the Daily Mail was just unbelievable. Like, mm. oh, isn't this nice? He's bought his mum a house. And then they sort, He's a good English lad. Yeah, exactly. Looking after his mum. And then they put it against the sort of Sterling one. It's like, buys her a showy mansion. of. Like, it's just like, oh, go fuck yourselves, honestly. Anyway. Yeah. He scored. Beautiful. Stimmers, what would your celebration be? I don't know. I'd, I'd struggle just not to run up to cameras and give them the finger. It's, I mean, it's, it's I mean, a... yeah, that's what I would do for sure. Maybe take a shit at the corner flag and wipe his ass with all their papers. That'd be good. <laughs> and then set it on fire. Yeah, you'd have to prep for that one, wouldn't you? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, just, there's just a ball boy in the corner with just a stack of red tops. Loads of copies like... of The Sun and The Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> and if he didn't need a poo or got stage fright, he'd just be a bit like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you rehearsed this, Raheem. You rehearsed this. <laughs> Talking it out. The referee's adding time on. I'd have to go for the old school Degeneration X. You know, suck it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Gotta go for that, I think. For what, me. Go, go steal an announcer microphone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all I got for news. So turn it over to Ian. So, yeah, we said we were going to do a uh, bit more of a non football one because the international break, I mean, the England result against Spain aside, has been fucking dull. And uh, we thought we'd try and do something a little bit different. Yeah, we we asked you guys for suggestions on what to talk about, but didn't get anything good. Luckily, <laughs> we've just got some mental fans that will just constantly send us questions. Dave Matteo. Dave Matteo. He came through. He always does. He always does. does as well. Always delivers the goods. So, uh, I'm reading this out mostly because of how he digs me out at the end, but uh, it, it's I've got to give him it. It's good. What movie would you want to remake from your childhood, and who do you cast in the lead role? Stimmers, since they didn't have movies when you were a kid, just pick a play or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, as annoyed as that is, I've got to give him that. <laughs> I did read that and laugh. So which play which play are you going for? Yeah, fucking Othello. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Taming of the Shrew or like the Old Testament? <laughs> the Old Testament. <laughs> fucking <hell. laughs> If the Old Testament's a play, like that's a hefty slog. Yeah, I know. Oh god. Yeah. That's gonna be that's... more than like that Harry Potter crap that's two parts. Like you're gonna be going to the theatre for like seven years straight every night. Yeah, that's dark as well. But I thought because I thought it was quite a tough question actually, I thought we could just maybe Based on the fact that Chuck's just had a little one, we can maybe just have a bit of a chat about uh, good or bad films from our childhood. Because uh, we're, we're all a few sort of years apart. We might yeah. have different uh, different perspectives on how films were. So are there any standout films from either of your childhoods that you can uh, remember? Yeah, I definitely prefer this direction because, to be honest, I don't really like remakes. I don't like... Re you you yeah. know, like now, like everything, because... Because movies are so like big budget and stuff, they need to do things that they they know are going to hit the audience. So that's why now like every Disney cartoon is getting a live action remake. Like they did the Jungle Book, which was admittedly very good, but then they're doing Aladdin, Lion King's in the works. The Aladdin trailer will look good though. It just dropped like last week. No, no, it won't. <laughs> no, no. It, it's, okay. Lion King's so good, like it's better than like Jungle Book and that. So like, you can't do it again. And then they're doing like Dumbo. But yeah, we spoke a bit about like Disney films and I mentioned like Land Before Time, which I always liked. My favourite my my favourite film of all time, which is linked to my childhood and explains a lot about who I am, is Drop Dead Fred, which is the Rick Mail oh, film. Oh, yes. Oh, of course, yeah. Which was released uh, the year I was born, actually. I think I think 1991. And I absolutely love that film. That's a great film. And I watched yeah, that that's a good one. at least once a year. In incidentally, that was meant to get a remake quite a few years ago yeah. maybe about six years ago with russell brand oh um, god but that all that all collapsed thankfully 
thank fuck for that. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of tied in around the time that Rick Mail died as well, so they kind of went, you know what, let's just not... Oh, fuck, thank fuck for that. I mean, I don't mind Russell Brand, but fuck off. I mean, yeah, he's not Rick Mail, <laughs> is he? That's not a big movie here at all. I, I think I saw it once on, like, cable TV on a random afternoon, and if I brought yeah. it up, like, no one would know what the hell I'm talking about. Similarly, I don't know if this would uh, would rate for you guys. I don't even know if you're aware of it over there, but there's a movie here that was super popular when I was a kid. Everyone my age is obsessed with it. It's called The Sandlot. Isn't that the baseball? Yeah, it's baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like a bunch of kids. They're like 10 years old-ish, and it's just like a classic summer adventure. They like try to kiss girls, and they go to a carnival and go on rides, and they try chewing tobacco, and a real like coming-of-age type story. How old are these kids that are having chewing tobacco? <laughs> <laughs> well, they sneak it from their dad. They're like 10-year-olds. Okay. That's part of the point. They get like really sick and throw up all over. It's a good scene. <laughs> it's really funny. They like chew tobacco. They go to a carnival and they're on like a Ferris wheel and they're just throwing up off the top of the Ferris wheel. When when did you last see it? Um, uh, Probably at some point during college. We used to like get drunk and watch kids movies in college. So Okay. Because that's the thing I like doing, seeing whether these films stand up when you... Yeah. Oh, no, it stands up for sure. It's It's a real yeah. good time still. So if we're talking about doing a remake, I'd love to see a remake of that. But like maybe about soccer, because I don't care about baseball even a little bit. But just, you know, like a classic kids adventure, good times, real throwback nostalgic yeah. kind of thing that's in right now. So, you know, throw the throw the kids from Stranger Things in there or the kids from uh, Ape or whatever, like one of the generic. Uh, they're the same kids. One the of same them's kids. the that same, I think. That pissed me off as well. It, that film was, that film was shit it. Yeah, it was not good. It was so bad. It was like, oh, we're going to make it like the 80s, but we're not. What we're going to do is, is we're going to make it like Stranger Things, which was something we were trying to make look like the 80s. And then we're going to go even further and just put one of the same kids in it, because that will work. I quite like Stranger Things, though. I'm a big nah, fan of that. It's garbage. Yeah, I quite like <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, get garbage. rid. So first, se- first season's all right. Second season, piece of crap. Do you know what? Actually, I, I ducked out the second season about halfway through, and I haven't finished it. I've said I'm going to go back to it, but no, the first one kept me watching, but the second one didn't. Don't bother. They had that one side episode about, like, Eleven's sister, who was named, like, Seven or some shit, and I was like, I don't care about this at all. Just take me back to, like, them hanging out in the town. I thought the monster in the first series was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, really it was, good. It it was all, well it designed. made sense, but sometimes they just take things too far. It's like... Not just like with remakes, but when they do sequels of films and stuff like it's complete. Like you could leave it as that. You can have just a whatever it is, like a 12 or 13 episode thing and yeah. leave it open and just be like whatever. But yeah, I think my, my other answer would, for this would probably be Top Gun. That came out before Top I was Gun. born, but fucking obsessed with that movie. I love Top Gun so much. So I'd want to see a Top Gun remake, but maybe with like uh, set in the Star Wars universe. And have it be about, like, young Poe Dameron, right? He's the best fighter pilot of the new era, but just, like, see him coming of age as the new hotshot pilot in the, you know, Academy for the Resistance or blah, 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 you know, whatever. Could you not just make it, like, a the same kind of homoerotic story, but between Han Solo and Chewbacca instead? I think they tried that already last year. Because I've never <laughs> seen, because I've never seen Top Gun, admittedly. But ev- everybody who's ever told me about it has said it is camp as hell. Like it I, is know, so camp. I know oh, that yeah. there is the Kenny the scene with Kenny Loggins playing with the boys and they're they're all playing like beach volleyball in like short shorts. <laughs> short shorts, shirtless, oiled up, very greasy. There's the the Top Gun High Five originates in that volleyball scene though. I don't know if you do the Top Gun High Five over there, but Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you meet at the top and then at the bottom. Some people were definitely meeting at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> play it. Play it. Damn it, I'm gonna have that song in my head now. What about you, Ian? What what are you picking? I was just going through films that films that were either good or bad. Uh, bad films. Did either of you see uh, Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck me. That film is so oh. bad. It's so bad. It's so easy to make a good film of that. I feel like, and they just completely fucked it. It was like weirdly high concept. And just like, I remember even as a kid being like, what is this all about? It's crazy. And it lost about $30 million or something. Yeah, it was horrific. Wasn't it like Bob Hoskins? Was Bob Hoskins as Mario. Mario. Like, that's just terrible casting. I mean, like, I like Bob Hoskins, but it's just terrible casting. No, uh, video, oh, video games do not make good movies. Yeah, of no. course. Yeah, Street Fighter. 
Street Fighter is, is bad, but it is also good. I, I love Street Fighter. I love oh, that it's movie. It's so bad. Like, everyone it's acknowledges so bad. that yeah, it's yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. And then Mortal Kombat is, like, the best bad one. But I believe in that Mario Brothers movie, that's where we find out that his full name is Luigi Mario. Well, of course, because they're the Mario Brothers. So it's Mario right. Mario and Luigi Mario. Yeah, which means his name is Mario Mario. Yeah. Oh, I'd yeah. forgotten about that. So good. Oh, God. That makes Jesus sense to me. <laughs> you just fully on board with that straight away, yeah. But it's just lazy uh, Nintendo in like the late 80s, just going like, early 80s, sorry. Just going like, oh, we need to make him Italian. I don't know, Mario Mario. All right, let's do that. Any other films that define you as children? I mean, I grew up watching Star Wars on repeat. On We had this VHS tape that Blockbuster doesn't exist anymore, so I can say this. We rented the movie from Blockbuster recorded it on like another VCR that was attached to the first VCR. Yeah. And so we just had a dubbed VHS, like a bootleg VHS of all three Star Wars movies on the same VHS. Cause it was like one of those super long ones. And I used to just play it over and over and over and over again until the thing started to wear through. Really? And so like, I just grew up watching Star Wars and then I had another VHS with all three back to the future movies. And that was the other VHS that I used to just watch forever on repeat when I was a kid. People like you are the reason that blockbuster does not exist anymore. Correct. <laughs> I used to do the same though, so it's fine. It's definitely my fault, not Netflix. Mine, mine then extended yeah. to uh, having a chip PlayStation and copying. Game. We can't, we can't keep this in, can we? I don't think. Yeah, of course we can. Yeah, we can. Who fucking listens? Like, there's yeah, like. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> well, honestly, all executive... couple hundred of our listeners are gonna yeah, go rat getting, us out to getting a, Sony. getting a CD rewriter drive and renting all the games yeah. for like two pound and putting it in the top drive. Everybody and... had that one uncle who would just like have a thousand. It was always an uncle. Of... Why was it an uncle? <laughs> well, for me, it was an uncle, and that's like no, but no, that's what I mean. Like for everyone, it was always like an uncle or like a mate. It was never uncle. your dad, right? Yeah, it was always the one like youngest uncle who was still young enough to know how to use technology and like be cool <laughs> and not be okay with doing illegal shit. And but like, because your parents wouldn't do illegal shit for you, usually. But your uncle's like, yeah, fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my, my kids. Kid. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, not my kids. <laughs> Did either of you ever watch um, Mac and Me? No. Oh, it was fucking, never even heard of that. It's an alien alien film that was like I think trying to recreate some success of ET, but they were just fucking. It scared the shit out of me as a kid, even though it shouldn't have, but it just did. It was fucking. Et Et scared the shit out of me as a kid. Et scared you, yeah. yeah oh oh yeah, that, same here. When they all come in like the suits and stuff, I would like flip out. Oh, because I was really little. Yeah, that was horrible. And then he's like dying and he's like killing the kid at the same time. And it's like, oh, wait, oh my like... God. I just Googled Mac and me. That thing is horrifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I no, it's the same. That is terrifying. That big old bug eyes. Like, Good, thank that. you. I feel valid. Why is its now, mouth cause... that shape? Oh my God. We're going to have to tweet a picture of this <laughs> it's for a fucking... bit of context. Yeah, good. I thought I was being a, a pathetic youngster, but yeah, that is scary stuff. Pathetic good. youngster. You're the opposite, mate. Not the pathetic oh, part. The I'm an impressive part. old person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that, yeah. Um, Toy Story, obviously, brilliant. How old were you guys when to- Toy Story came out? I feel like I was possibly a little bit too old, but you were... It was 1995, wasn't it? Uh, Yeah, 95. So I would have been... Hold on, I'm trying to do math in my head. Not good at it. Seven. <laughs> Dude, you're... Oh, forget it. I can't even <laughs> I understand high conceptual level math. I haven't. I know I have a master's degree in it, but arithmetic, not so much. Jesus Christ, that's a shocking indictment of the education system at lower levels. Toy Story Four is coming out. You guys gonna go watch that when it comes out? What really? Ah, uh, do we need yeah. more? Yeah, Toy Story Three was amazing. Yeah, Toy Story Three was good. If you watched Toy Story Three and you weren't sobbing your eyes out at the end, yeah, like you oh, just have man. No, no heart. That was. That was disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. I didn't need that. I didn't need to feel that way about toys. <laughs> oh, it's fucking heartbreaking. The end of it that. was when they're like down and they just like they get hold hands, holding and, oh. hands. Yeah. Oh my god. All three of them films are fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Toy really Story Four is twenty nineteen. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, they better not fuck it up. I'm sure they'll be good. They wouldn't be doing it if they didn't have a good script. They wouldn't be doing it if they didn't think they could make a shitload of money out of it. Well, yeah, that is true. But they have taken their time with every film, and every film's been great. Hopefully it'll be all right. What about Aladdin? Did you watch that a lot? Hate kid? Aladdin. Hate it. Love Aladdin. Very that excited my, for the live that action That was one. my thing as a kid. I loved Aladdin. I loved nah, that we went to go see Aladdin on Broadway, too, and it was really good. 
I've never seen the stage show. Is is it Will Smith been cast as the genie in the film? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that's yeah, going to be. I must admit, I read that and it's like... That's just when I thought it couldn't get worse. I just hope he doesn't try to rap. Because he's not a good rapper. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Uh, but, like, I mean, it's one of them things that obviously Robin Williams just was so good as the genie it's like how are you gonna how are you gonna recast that as yeah they're just gonna have to go in a completely different direction with it right like they can't just Mm. no one can capture that energy yeah so just don't touch it leave it (laughs) that's what i mean then because it it sullies the you know that kind of thing because robin williams was incredible when he was incredibly talented and Mm. like I, i don't think any of the lines were written as like with most of his films, it was yeah, all yeah, ad-libbed, yeah, yeah. especially yeah. with... I will say for the Broadway version, it's a pretty different interpretation of the character, and they do a good job of not trying to make it be Robin Williams. They just do a different thing with it, but it still fits the part in the movie. It still comes off really well. So if they try to just not not try to copy Robin Williams, but do a different thing with it and do a good job, then it could be good. It won't be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's 40 minutes on... Uh, Movies from our chilled so childhood. Just, yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> this is going good. Uh, Dave Mateo, of course, came in with another one. Which uh... is <laughs> that Oh, that reminds me, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is amazing as well. Let's fit that in there. Bit of Harry Belafonte as well. Jeez, I've not seen that in years. That's that's getting a remake slash sequel. Speaking of everything bollocks, literally, you can pick any film, any film from about 1981 to. Probably about 2003. Chances are you got like a 70% chance of it being remade in the next four years. Howard the Duck. Well, Howard the Duck, they just kind of filter into the different Marvel things. Because he was in, I want to say Guardians of the Galaxy in the end. Yeah, that's right. He was in the post credits of the first Guardians movie. What the fuck is Howard the Duck? Howard the Duck's like a talking duck Marvel character thing. Yeah, It's widely regarded as the worst movie of all time. Or one of. Oh. Okay. Well, no, very bad. They made yeah. it in 1986, um, and the it's just terrible. Like the theme song was great, though. No, Denver, the last dinosaur, but whatever. Yeah, Denver, the last dinosaur. That is a good theme, to be fair. Oh, I got you. Did I'll I give yeah. you that? I'll give you that. It, it rings a bell, but I, I definitely didn't watch it. Yeah, Dave Mateo comes in with another one. What would be in the Miles Offside cocktail? Well, I think we all know the first ingredient, don't we, lads? Well, it's Lithuanian Jägermeister, isn't it? <laughs> oh, of course oh. It is. oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. That's not where I went with it. And then uh, just add a bit more and uh, away you go. <laughs> Chase it with seven beers. Hmm. Yeah. Have England win a penalty shootout and that's about it. <laughs> you can only drink it once every, what, 50 years? Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, I was like, all right, we right, what's our deal? We're like... Part English, part American, right? Like, we talk about that a lot. Right, so I said, yeah. what's the most English liquor that I can think of? Gin. Right? Yeah. Beef eater gin. Uh, what's super American? Bourbon. Great. Right. So now I got to find a cocktail that's got gin and bourbon in it. Type it in the Google machine. I know Chuck knows every drink ever made, but I typed it in the Google machine. And there is one called the Suffering Bastard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it is one ounce of bourbon, one ounce of gin... A dash of bitters, which is also perfect for us. <laughs> Very bitter. And then uh, four ounces of chilled ginger ale. So, Ooh. Wow. That actually sounds really good, right? So we've got the English, we've got the American. We're bitter and strong tasting. And the humor is very dry. So the suffering bastard. We need to do a pod where we're all on those. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> we're all on suffering bastards. I like that. I am a suffering bastard right now, Jesus. You will be next few months, mate. <laughs> no, sorry, I was just enjoying Ian sculling a massive glass of wine. I'm <laughs> not giving a fuck. <laughs> on all the cocktails. <laughs> I'm on the red. <laughs> Bottle of Elvino. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gina has asked us, uh, what are your favourite desserts? Now, I mean, the food theme always runs runs heavy in this podcast, but uh, Oscar, what... Apart from multi flavored ice cream. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, that was the worst. <laughs> it literally winced there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it still hurts to think about all these years later. Uh, I'm going to go with, I don't know if you guys have it over there. It's called a maple, maple butter blondie. No, I want to hear about it immediately. 
Okay. It's got about three three things yeah. that I'm happy with already. Yeah. Maple syrup, <laughs> love it. Butter, love it. Blondes, <laughs> <laughs> all in. <laughs> a blondie's like a brownie, but it's not chocolate, right? So it's okay. just like a more of a yellow flavor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. A yellow flavor. Yeah. It yeah, like yellow, yellow cake, a pound cake, yellow cake. No. Well, so like, yeah, no, it doesn't uh, I don't really know. translate. Damn it! It's like a it's like a brownie, but not chocolate. Basically, it's a okay. cake. So it's a cake. Okay. <laughs> so it's a cake. Yes, it's just a cake. You get a square of cake. You put some vanilla ice cream on top, and then it's on a searing hot pan, and then you pour butterscotch on it with walnuts, and you eat it off the searing hot pan. So the the ice cream and the butterscotch like caramelize when they touch the pan, but then they're cold on top of their thing. So it's like a nice mix of hot and cold. Very sweet. Yeah, I like it. So Google a picture of it. Maple butter blondie. It's a good dessert. When I visited Oscar in New York um, back in May, we went to... What was the name of the dessert place we went to? Veneros. It's one of the best bakeries in New York City. Yes. It was amazing. And the cannolis they did there were incredible. Mm. And then we had this strawberry shortcake. Yeah, we had two desserts after we just had dinner. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it oh, kind of went such a without good saying. That was so uh, good. The fact that, did. like, you, we were like deciding what to have, and then you ordered two desserts. And I was like, well, I was stuck between ordering two. So <laughs> if Oscar's going to do it. Yeah, exactly. This was way before I realized that Oscar was a former competitive eater as well. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were both absolutely phenomenal. And there were, the fact that there was a massive queue to get in and you had to wait like half an hour, like that was incredible. So those strawberry shortcakes and, and uh, cannolis were pretty special. Yeah, that's Veneros on 12th and Avenue A if you're visiting New York City. And it is not far away from the best lunch place in the city. It's called Smack or Margarita's Mac and Cheese. It is a mac and cheese specialty restaurant. Chuck, you also went there. We went there right before that. It, it is just mac and cheese, but uh, it is like high-end gourmet amazing. mac and cheese with crazy ingredients. And they serve it to you right in the hot cast iron, and it is fucking amazing. Oh, so if you're ever going to New York... would love that. Ma- macaroni oh. and cheese is his favorite thing. He would absolutely love that. No, it was tits. What did you get, Chuck? I don't remember. Um, I had one. It had like a spicy sausage with peppers, and I can't remember. Was it the one that has figs in it too, or no? No, I didn't get anything. There was no like fruit in it. It was yeah, it was like a spicy. I don't know. It was a fucking amazing. I didn't care. <laughs> it was like meat, cheese, pasta, like in my face. Yeah. But um, general desserts. I like a good crumble, decent like a rhubarb crumble um, with custard. But now I don't know how this is gonna go. Cold custard. Yeah, fine with that. Well, I think it works because the dessert is hot and then the accompaniment yeah. is cold. So you have like ice cream. Like you don't just heat it up. You don't have hot cream, do you? Yeah, no. It's ice cream. No, that sounds fine by me. I'm all about tiramisu. I'm mad for tiramisu. Ooh, and it's yeah. a weird. It's a weird thing because like when I was a kid, I made the decision I didn't like coffee flavored stuff. So yeah, I, didn't... I think most kids have that at one point. Yeah, but I but then I kept that going for years and years. Just didn't try it. Just went, oh, no, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. No, and then I was about like mid to late twenties and had some tiramisu and was like, "Oh fuck, I've wasted my life." <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And now it's all I order. If it's on the if it's on the menu, I have to order it because I feel like uh, there were years of wasted tiramisu. Uh, but you're in it. You're in a tiramisu deficit, and you've really got to exactly. kind of make it back. It annoys me now that uh, it annoys me now that I'm not eating tiramisu now. <laughs> that's me with creme brulee i went years and years and years being like that's a weird name it's probably not good i don't think i'm gonna like it and i never tried it and then i hit like 25 and i was like holy shit this is amazing and so like now i'll get creme brulee everywhere i go even when it's like clearly a place where i shouldn't be having creme brulee from because i'm like oh my god they have creme brulee at this gas station it's gonna be amazing <laughs> but the crust on the top is just where it's gone really stale and old yeah, it's exactly. just kind of like collecting bits See, that's kind of like a custard. That's just basically custard with a hard top. Like that's yeah, it, like yeah, caramelized yeah. top. It's, it's really hard with desserts. That's one of the places where like the words differ the most from England to America. Yeah. Like our biscuits are super different from your biscuits. Our custard is different from your custard. We don't I don't know what the fuck a crumble is, but I'm sure we have something that's the same thing. We just have a different so name. A like... crumble a crumble is basically when you get you make some sort of fruit compote. 
ish. Yeah. Usually and like so, an autumnal fruit, like apples or rhubarb. Yeah, or something so it might do like apple and blackberry or apple on its own with like some cinnamon, and you boil it down with some sugar, and don't you don't do so much to make it into like a jam, but you sweeten it, and then you would put like broken up shortbread on the top, so like crumble, so it's really really thin, and then yeah. put that on the top, and then you just shove it in the oven to bake it. Yeah, we don't have that. I just looked up pictures of it. Never even heard of that. Yeah, it's good. It is tits. Because it's there's good. so much butter in the top and it mixes with the sweetness. And that sounds delicious. You might yeah, have like, good. so like a rhubarb is obviously like quite acidic, so it balances quite well. The definition of it is a sweet variety containing stewed fruit topped with crumbly mixture of fat, flour, and sugar. Yeah. And I'm like, go. oh, yeah. <laughs> you had me at fat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put it in my mouth. Mm. <laughs> but do you find that that is the place where things differ the most? It's like, um, we'll have the same foods, but have completely different names. And then also we'll have foods that just don't at all exist in the other place. Like pomegranates. Um, yeah, I think food <laughs> is is where there is the most difference. Because I think more because it's so, like, those items are quite commonplace. So you notice more that there is a difference as well. Yeah, that's true. And I think a lot of cuisine is, like, so local too. Like, I think most people would know, like, aubergine and eggplant or, like, courgette and zucchini. Or... Yeah, actually, even in the U.S., we have a lot of a problem with people using different words for the same item when you vary from region to region. So, like for example, there's a sandwich where in New York we would call it a hero. It's just a, you know, like a foot long sandwich, like it's a like long a sub. bread. It's like a sub. Yeah, it's the it? same as a sub. Yeah. Some places they call it a grinder, though. Some places it's called a hero. Some places it's called a sub. Some places it's called a. You know, lots of different names for it. Or And when I first moved up to Rhode Island, which is where I live now, they don't call it a drinking fountain. They call it a bubbler, which uh-huh. how fucking stupid is that? Yeah. So like <laughs> I'll have someone be like, hey, do you know where the bubbler is around here? And I'm like, ah, uh, what the no. fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and they're like, you know, the thing where you go drink water, the bubbler. I'm like, do you fucking mean a drinking fountain? What is wrong with you? <laughs> and in the south and this pisses me off so much so if you're from the south i apologize in advance i guess but yeah both of you are rubbing your hands and getting ready to listen yeah in, in the northeast we call it soda fine in the northwest and i think also in the midwest they call it pop which a little weird but fine enough right just sounds kind of old-timey to me because i think we called it pop in the 50s whatever it was the sound it was the sound it made wasn't it when right, right they right, opened right. it like the type of bottles they had in the south they call it coke but no matter what kind you're drinking so you'll go to a restaurant and be like hi can i have a coke and they'll be like sure what kind sprite That's dr pepper fucking bizarre. And I'm like no a fucking coke like i said coke so people are like <laughs> like they just use the word coke to mean soda yeah so if you order a coke they're like well what kind do you want a root beer do you want a sprite do you want a you know yeah, all the different bizarre. things and i'm like no so they call it a coke coke I'm like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> Uh, first time I encountered that, I was like, what? Because our country's so big that like there are a lot of language yeah. variations from place to place. Yeah, but we have to say, I think the one main one I always see here, and maybe Ian knows, is whenever they show a picture of like a bread roll. <laughs> so they show like a picture of a bread roll and they say like, oh, what do you call this? And so depending on where you are in England, like some will say, obviously a roll, some will say a bap, some will say a balm cake, balm some cake, will yeah. say... <laughs> Just a bomb. Some will say a cob. Cob, yeah, bloody hell, yeah. Um, Ian, what do you guys call it in the north? I'm not in the north, you fucking... <laughs> I'm going to get a bleep, you fucking... <laughs> I'm not in the north. <laughs> Just making more work for himself. <laughs> I haven't got a problem with the north. I live in the east, which is fucking weird. <laughs> Jesus. So what do you call it in Peterborough? Bread roll. Yeah, it's bread roll, isn't it? Yeah, it's a roll. It's a fuck bread roll. You roll it and it rolls. If you throw it, it rolls. Yeah, it's just bread roll. Is that how you name all your food? You throw it and whatever it does, it's the name. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Most things are called a plop. <laughs> <laughs> but it depends how hard it is as well on what surface. Because like, if, you've, if you've got like a melon and you throw it at a window, that's called like a smash. Um, yeah, yeah. Tomato against a brick wall is a splat. Like, you know, it's just, yeah. It's very (laughs) context sensitive. Onomatopoeic foods all the time, yeah. Absolutely. 
do you guys put oh how do i say this without saying the word um it's an ice cream topping it's like multiple colors and it's tiny little cylindrical hundreds, hundreds and thousands. thousands what so hundreds and thousands so like little candy things where they're 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 really small like they're a couple of millimeters and they're yeah, sprinkles yeah, 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 like yeah. americans call them sprinkles sprinkles right? okay yes yeah. what do you call them i didn't even know this I was... yeah hundreds and thousands that's what it's called that's fucking crazy. Okay, that's a much better response than I thought I was yeah, going to get. I'll give you that one. But it's because here, like, sprinkles, like in America, that's called sprinkles and that's it, right? Well, no, because there are other places that call them jimmies, and then some people call them, oh, God, there's another word for it, too. I don't even remember. We call them sprinkles where I'm from, but, like, I know jimmies is definitely another word for it, which I don't know why jimmy, like, is that the name. a brand name, or? No, I don't, well, I actually don't know. I don't think so, though. But what is it, hundreds and thousands? Hundreds and thousands, yeah. Because yeah, it looks like there's hundreds and thousands That's amazing. That's so much better than sprinkles. <laughs> yeah, because sprinkles could be anything. It's just anything you sprinkle. As opposed to hundreds and thousands, which can only be... That's only a number that applies <laughs> to those specific yeah, things. Yeah, two like, things are mutually exclusive. Don't check. <laughs> right. Don't check. Uh, oh, yeah. that's a great name. I didn't even know that. I was just yeah. going to say sprinkles versus jimmies. And then you guys come in here with hundreds and thousands. You made my fucking day. That's amazing. It's a good name. Spread it. Spread it. Make it happen. Make it a thing. Oh, man. Get chased out of your town. Be a social pariah. <laughs> I already am because I call everything by the New York names. And they're like, what do you mean a hero? What's a drinking fountain? <laughs> Fuck you guys. I love your Rhode Island accent. That wasn't even. That was just like an old lady. It wasn't even a Rhode Island accent. Okay, I, I just assumed. No, I know. I don't know why I did. I meant to do a Rhode Island accent, and just angry old lady came out. It's weird. Where's the bubbler? Where's the bubbler? Yeah. Ah. The bubbler. Where's the bubbler? Okay, another day, Mateo. One is. Uh, have you got any hangover cures? More alcohol. Greasy food, man. Greasy food. Specifically for me, bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel. Or a, this is a New York specific thing, but a slice of baked ZD pizza. So you, it's a pizza slice and then you cook baked ZD, you put it on top and it's like carbs on carbs with cheese on cheese. Now explain a baked ZD for those who are not in the know. ZD is a cylindrical pasta. It's like about, I don't know, two inches long, tube shaped, not even two inches. Yeah, two inches. Fine. Whatever. You, you put it with um, red sauce, marinara sauce, tomato sauce, whatever you call it, wherever you're from. Uh, mozzarella cheese on top, and then you bake it in the oven for like a half hour. It gets nice and crispy on top. So it's kind of like a lasagna, but less going on. Yeah. Um, but in a good way. It's, it's It gets nice and stringy. So you make a baked ziti, you make a regular pizza slice, and then you put the baked ziti on top of the pizza slice. And you heat it up for a little bit. Um, and it's like... I'm I'm making a symbol at the camera, which the listeners obviously can't hear, but it's a very thick thing. So like one ziti slice is like a, a full lunch and you have to like really bite into it. So if you have that in the morning when you're hungover, it's so much work to eat that by the time you're done, you're like, you can't possibly be hungover anymore. Nice. See, I've done that before and just put a spaghetti bolognese on top of a pizza. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. There you go. Ian is like, what is wrong with these two human beings? <laughs> Fucking animals. More like, how did I find these gems? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm writing all this shit down. Where, where I've usually got edit notes, I'm just writing down cocktails and things. Ideas. So, yeah. Ian's idea. Ian's weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jeez. Chuck, you got any hangover cures? Uh, more alcohol. Or so much alcohol the night before that you wake up still drunk. Still, still drunk, but that oh god, that extends the hangout. Like when it starts around lunchtime. No, no, fuck no, me. no, because you're powerful. No, you just got to never sober up. Never. Well, that's the thing. I, I've only done that. I only did that a couple of times, like at uni, and it's it's surprisingly good. Like you, you, because by the time you have your first drink, you're straight back on it, and you just you're away you go from there. Or, although one other thing is, if you get get like a pint glass. Get yourself like something like a white wine or whatever, so it's not like super alcoholic. Put about I don't know about a hundred mil in there. Well, it's not like compared to like oh, could take a pint of vodka. Um, <laughs> so that, yeah. Put about put about a hundred mil of white wine in it in a pint glass, yeah. a bit of ice, and top it with lemonade. Okay. And then just drink that because it's not so much alcohol that will make you like relive the night before. You know, sometimes yeah. 
where you fall asleep with like a vodka yeah. lemonade next to you or a gin and tonic next to your bed and you forget you wake up in the morning you think it's water you get halfway through sculling it before you realize holy uh. shit there's five shots of gin in there <laughs> Jeez. we've all been there guys um yeah. so it's just enough alcohol that it gets into your system and brings you around but not so much that it disgusts you plus you get the sugar plus you get the fluids yeah yeah i feel like on behalf of all of americans i should bring up i've never liked them at all they're gross but the bloody mary do you guys have bloody marys over there yeah, yeah of course yeah it's like the breakfast drink for the day after if you're hungover i've never really done it is it any, is, I don't like it because uh, people yeah, get ridiculous with it. Like, or you can go like when you eyes. get a breakfast drink and there's a stick of celery sticking out of the top. I'm like, well, that's traditional. But there's the plate. There's places that then put like burger sliders or <laughs> like fried shrimp in the top, or they put like a half a chicken and like like I'm not even joking. If you look up, just Google ridiculous bloody God, Mary my, garnishes. My pen's running out. Everything's of coming here. back to cocktail. Yeah, <laughs> um, and you'll just see how mental it is. But if you go, if you can go one further from the bloody area, make a red eye, which if you've seen the film Cocktail is what, uh, what's his name? Doug Halloran, I want to say. Oh, oh, some, I don't know, whatever his fucking name is. Uh, the like the main kind of Jedi master of, of the film Cocktail. Um, he always orders a red eye, which is basically like half a Bloody Mary effectively. Um, you then fill it up with beer and then you drop a raw egg inside and you down oh, the whole thing. Oh, fuck off. Ugh. Um, That's just... That, that sounds, sounds horrible. horrible. That sorts your that sorts your shit out. Yeah, in what way? That sounds that sounds like a trial. Well, I mean, you either get drunk again and sort yourself out, or, or your you body just vomit. purges from yeah. both ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very much a make or break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose. Jesus Christ, that'll do it. And uh, lastly, we've uh, got something from longtime contributor Johnny OG, who always comes good. Uh, he's got he put. In a direct message to us, topic of discussion for your boner episode, mainly aimed at OP. Were you part of a frat house at your university? I was not. Neither. I've been to many learning institutions over the course of my education. Uh, None of them had frats because I didn't really do the whole like big campus school thing. I always wanted to stay in New York. And as you can imagine, on the island of Manhattan, there's not really that much space for campuses and stuff. They were all what we call vertical campuses. So like where I did my uh, undergrad, there was three buildings, was the entire university. And each building was about 20 stories tall. And they connected with sky bridges. So like you never had to go outside. And it was an entire university in three buildings, including a big library and like a gym and all that stuff. But that means there was no room for frat houses anywhere. So I never actually went to an institution with frats. Um, but I almost certainly would have been if I had gone to one of those schools because I, I did like to get my party on in my undergrad days. I don't get really like I, I've seen like all the films and stuff, but I still don't really get what a what it is fraternity or a frat house or a sorority house is. It's just like a group of like people in it, and they just how do they have a house? Whose house is it? <laughs> so the the frat owns the house, um, because it's a national organization with like a president and stuff. So like you're a local chapter of a uni- of a national fraternity. It's like a system right. organization, whatever. So the frats own the houses at different schools. They're not quite on campus. They're usually like on the edge of campus, but one block off. Yeah. And then uh, whoever is the president runs the house. Right. And, you know, people, you can live at the house. You don't have to. And then they'll just throw big parties every so often. So it's basically a way so, of like. So why do they need an organization? Um, I don't know. And how is it funded? Yeah, it, basically you can like fundraise and like it's easier to organize. I don't know. Because then it's not just like you and your friends. It's like you pledge the frat and then people who you wouldn't have been friends with otherwise also so pledge the frat. So, so you go you to have... parties and drink with people you don't like. Yeah. That's just going out in London. You That's just go on these major <laughs> parties where it's like, you know, a hundred undergrads. And then they'll have a joint party with like a sorority, which is the girl version. And so there's like a hundred girls all at this crowded ass party and you can get like copious amounts of booze. It's just easier to organize large groups of humans, I think. See, I suppose then we, cause we have like Freshers Week here, which is renowned in any university and especially in like big university towns where it's just that all of the clubs and bars, cause obviously it's different in the States because, you know, even if you're at college and university, you're not legally allowed to drink. Yeah, that's definitely part of it, because, like, you can't legally go out to a bar until you're, like, 
halfway through your senior year or sometimes after graduation. But that it's, of it's so strange that there's something that literally to to get kind of more like analytical of it for a bit. It's we're so weird that something that is literally just seen as somewhere where people can go drink, have massive parties, can still exist in the environment of that 99% of the people who will be there, it is illegal for them to be drinking. And how it's, it's still allowed to exist as part of a university or they'll be associated with it or that there is some organisation that would be happy to encourage underage drinking. Do you, think, do you think that's why it exists culturally? Because they, they don't drink until they're 21, so they have this sort of frat house thing where... uh no i i don't think so because it's not no, that no. hard to get in like there's always a couple of bars that everyone knows like oh they'll serve you if you're underage as long as you have some sort of id okay. um right but but yeah that, i don't think it makes it do you do you mean more ian that it would become a place where it can be more controlled for them um, do you mean it do you mean it that way because like in the states it's not even like so in england the law is so gray because there are so many different rules about how old you could be to drink so, like, in your own household, you uh, your parents can give you some alcohol if you're, like, over the age of five or something like that. Or, like, if you're with a, someone over the age of 18 and you're having a main meal in a restaurant and you're over 16, you can have a half a pint or a small glass yeah. of wine or whatever. Whereas in the States, like, literally, if you're under 21, it is illegal to buy or consume alcohol. That's yeah. it? Yep. Yeah, that's correct. I think, historically, my understanding, and I don't know, I've never, like, researched this or whatever, but my understanding is that frats started as like academic societies for like this is way the fuck back in the day people to basically like we are all interested in the same thing and we all have connections so we can create like a literal social network so that when we graduate like now someone who was in my fraternity and has a lawyer a law firm can give me an internship because they know me from being a member of the fraternity Mm -hmm. and then inevitably because it was a bunch of 18 year old guys it just turned into like getting drunk and trying yeah. to bang chicks. Yeah, I suppose it's kind of the same. <laughs> it's kind of the same as like the Freemasons here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, exactly. just similar. Yeah. Kind of, well, no, Freemasons are around the world anyway. But... Yeah, Freemasons are here also. Like half our um, presidents have been Freemasons. Yeah, yeah, Fuck it's it's, it's everywhere. Um, I don't know. I still just any time I hear frat house, I just want to go doga, doga, doga. <laughs> oh, it's as ridiculously stereotypical as that. It really is. Like. I fucking love Animal House, just to take it all the way back to films that should never be remade, ever. It should never be touched because it's kind of technically been remade a million times. Yeah. That film is incredible. Uh, Incredibly accurate depiction of frat houses is the movie Neighbors with Seth Rogen and Zac Efron. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I've not seen it, no. Basically, this couple who just has a newborn um, own a house, and then the house next to them gets sold to a fraternity. And they're like, oh, my God, they're going to be partying all the time and it's going to keep our baby up and it's hard enough having a newborn, blah, 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 blah. Hijinks ensue. There's a rivalry, blah, blah, blah. But the the depiction of the frat parties and of the frat, like, organization in that movie is, like, spot on from all the friends that I visited at other colleges and, like, everything I've ever seen about an actual frat. So it's also super funny. I like it. There's a sequel, not as funny, but. Uh, Johnny OG goes on to say, and to Stimmers, who I think went to uni, uh, were you a member of the Anglia Ruskin Young Socialist Movement? My my story is that, talking of bullshit degrees, Chuck, I did creative music technology. Right. What's that when it's at home? Uh, pressing record. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's creative. There's yeah. music. It's yeah. technology. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, he's, he's hit the nail on the head in that there aren't many universities in the east of England. <laughs> That are prestigious um so i went to scarborough which... because that's a logical <laughs> fucking step <laughs> why wouldn't you no it was hull university but it was oh uh, my god yeah but oh it was, it was, Oscar, you remember of... how you were talking earlier about how disgusting it is that people in the south call it coke mm-hmm. right now take that and apply that to a region of people in the north of england and that's that's what basically we're talking about here okay now yeah, <laughs> that's all. Scarborough, <laughs> we're going to Scarborough. Uh, so, my yeah, so my, my this campus was tiny. It had uh, halls of residence for about three hundred people. Uh, they only did about sort of five or six subjects. So it was uh, music technology, theatre studies, business studies, some computing bollocks or whatever. 
But the advantage of it was like the student union was like a tiny little pub, proper glasses. Like you'd go in and you'd know everyone in there, or like you'd if you spent the day in there, people you you'd know everyone who came in from lectures and stuff. Because I went to visit like friends at uni, and their student unions were like a fucking super club. Yeah, plastic yeah, yeah. glasses, twenty five minutes to get served at the bar. It's a fucking nightmare. My my place was lovely, tiny little pub. You know, one one pound thirty five for a pint of Carlsberg Export. Fucking those. Thank were the you days. kindly. It was beautiful, but uh, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about bullshit degrees, sign me up. Fucking hell. Yeah, I have a music degree also, Ian, actually. That's one of the many things that I've studied at some point. (laughs) You've got a proper one, though, haven't you? No, no, no. Mine's in uh, music history and composition. Jazz. Yeah, he learned how to press record and pause. Yeah, no, that's a, no music history and composition. That's a proper one. Mine was dicking about on guitar for three years. (laughs) It re- uh, yeah. Isn't that just what it is? Whatever course you do at uni, yeah, basically they all dick about. Well, one of my courses was Sheeran. the history and composition of the Beatles, and we just listened to the Beatles for an entire semester, and then broke down yeah. like the sheet music and the music theory behind it. But it was mostly just like listening to the Beatles. It's a fucking awesome class. <laughs> yeah, I did enjoy my degree massively, but I oh, fuck me, I didn't learn anything until the last year, and then we did like a live sound live sound module and then I actually learned something but fuck me I could have done the three year degree it felt like it could have been condensed into like a three month course it was just most of it was fucking useless anyway <laughs> so now I'm pressing record on a podcast with you Yay! guys <laughs> remember that That's kids that. transferable <laughs> skills exactly nothing exactly. is useless <laughs> knowledge is power uh, he goes on to ask, and to Chuck, how was it being bummed daily at public school? I didn't go to public school. I don't know where that's come from. Uh, one thing I've always found weird of public school and why it's called public school is because it's not yeah. for the public. I know, I hate and that. It's, and it, there's private school and public yeah. school and private school are the same thing. They mean the same thing, yeah. That's really I weird. don't get it. I went to grammar school. You went to grammar school? Yeah, it's basically the same thing, but you don't pay for it. Well, they claim that you don't pay for it, but then, you know, they make your parents yeah, kind of... you paid for it. Pay That's for it. crazy and weird. Here, public school means yeah. it's free and for the public. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Private school is private and it costs money. Yeah. And there is like one thing that people call grammar school, and that is when you go to Catholic school from kindergarten to eighth grade which I don't know right. what the equivalent of eighth grade would be over there. It's the year before high school. So that's from the age of five to... 13-ish. 14, yeah? 13, yeah. Yeah, so that's... Because in America, you start school a year later than us. So you start kindergarten at five, we start what's called reception at four. Well, we have, pre-K, you might... we have pre-kindergarten, which is at four. Yeah, but that's not like legal requirement, is it? Neither is kindergarten, actually. Oh, kindergarten isn't. Okay, so no. technically you can go two years. Huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to go to school till you're six here. Oh, wow. Which is part of why our education system is so broken. The first two years, you're basically just learning how to colour in. <laughs> That's all it is. I don't know. Finley did a load of phonics. He came back at five and was going, uh, Dad, this is a diet... D- Daddy, because uh, he was five then. He's grown up now. He's eight, so we don't do Daddy anymore. Dad. But, Good. Uh... Adults who call their parents Daddy and Mummy need to be taken out the back and shot. Absolutely true. Yep. Uh I just didn't expect him to be the one to come home and go, I'm not calling you daddy anymore. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough, mate. Those days um, are over. Yeah. He just calls uh, you yeah, Ian no, now. Back... <laughs> Mr. Stimson. Old Fuck it out. I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let you beat me. That's all right. I've... Yeah, quite. Yeah. You need to get your uh, bleep in every episode. Um, so, yeah, he comes back from school at five and he's talking about diagraphs. And I, I genuinely have to go, what, what is a diagraph to my five, six-year-old boy? And he's like, oh, it's a, it's a, a phonic sound where it's made up from two letters. Two letters, like, yeah, together. Okay. It used to be called a diphthong. There you go, guys. Learned that when I did studied Latin. Yeah, that's right, studied Latin. Right, Shit okay, you can't possibly have a go at anyone for claiming that they thought you went to public school when you studied Latin. You played... Uh, what's that game? Uh, Eaton. Quidditch. Or... No, that was Oscar. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Eton Fives. Yeah, I played Eton, Eton yeah, Fives. You can't possibly have a go at anyone. Eton, which is a public school. Okay, this is really confusing because public school means, I think, the opposite. Does it mean like it's you're all fancy if you go to public school? Yeah, 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 yeah. like proper, proper fancy. Like So Eton, okay. Eton College is a public school. Right, 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 right. Okay. So it's it's really like high class and like high money and the kids live okay. there. So it's kind of boarding school, but a boarding school wouldn't necessarily be a public school because it doesn't have to be that fancy. So it could gotcha. kind of be like a military school. I, and it makes no sense, but it's private. Like you have to pay to go there. It's yeah, a load yeah, yeah, yeah. of bollocks. And you probably have school on Saturdays as well and have to go to church on Sundays and those kind of things. But I went to a means-tested Church of England grammar school. You got into a means-tested school. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm fucking smart, man. <laughs> Just spelt some dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Parasaurolophus. P-A-R... No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to... <laughs> yeah, you're, the, you're a real rain man with those dinosaurs, man. Not so much with the years of movies you think you are, but apparently you don't actually know what year movies are from. Fuck off. You had to. Look, you literally googled it as we were talking. Now, Lion King, I knew. Jurassic Park, I was wrong, but Lion King, I knew. <laughs> Chuck's so mad right now. <laughs> so pissed off. It's so good to be able to piss both of you off with like a couple of words. It's really nice. All right. What What are the couple of words? Well, you know, Ian, you make a couple of jokes about uh, age, technology. I'm fine with it. Don't know what you mean, mate. Living in the north. Man, you know, man's got a man's got a degree in technology. Can't insult him there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then for yeah. Chuck, you know, hipster, hipster. I just love it because you're the hipster. <laughs> <laughs> so hipster, it's great. Yeah, but nothing phases me, man. It's like it's real hard to catch me, get me all flustered and stuff. But you guys are like mm. easy targets. It's yeah, why you. Hit, it's why you love me. Because mm. <laughs> I'm such a. A bastard. What's the name of it? I'm such a suffering bastard. We're, We're the suffering, suffering bastards. bastards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll end this. Uh, we'll end this listener extravaganza on the last bit that Johnny OG said because Chuck Chuck got back to him and uh, mentioned that. Well, actually, your words were: "I went to grammar school, not public school. The bumming was average." <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, still happened daily though. <laughs> He then said, uh, I went to, and I'll sub out the uh, name of the school, our cricket coach got sacked for inappropriate behaviour with the students. Needless to say, given my good looks, I have had to have years of counselling to get over it, but my God, I have a beautiful cover drive. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite something. Chose the sacrifice that you make to uh, excel in sport. So with that last lovely contribution from Johnny OG... We'd like to thank you all for your contributions to this uh, sort of non-football episode we've had. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us in the future, then we are at Miles Offside Pod on Twitter and Miles Offside on Facebook, milesoffsidepod at gmail.com if you'd like to send us anything longer. Uh, we really appreciate all your contributions. Also, if you could give us a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you get your pods, that really helps us. Uh, we've had some five stars lately. And uh, we've seen little bumps in the rankings. I don't know if you guys saw, but we are we charted in Barbados. Charted in Barbados. Yeah. I'm big in the Caribbean, lads. We can yeah. retire now. Exactly. Fantastic. So if you can give us five star reviews, it massively helps us. Please, guys. Please. Please. Yeah. Please, please. And with that, you might not believe it. But guys, it's finally some football coming back that we want to talk about. Hey. Oh, thank Premier God. League's back. Don't worry, guys. Another <laughs> international break in a month. There is, isn't there? Fuck yeah. Me. Bringing it back down. Um, so, yeah, so we've got some... I'm not going to lie, the fixtures are pretty mixed. Um, big ones, Chelsea, Man United, of course. Um, Yay! Chelsea going to win, aren't they? Uh, yeah, Mourinho's going to be... I believe he's suspended. He got charged for his comments after the Newcastle match. Is he? Yeah, Why I think so. <laughs> Did he actually get suspended? So do you mean do you mean to tell me that you had actual news about football that you didn't put <laughs> in our aptly well inappropriately titled <laughs> rapid 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 fire news section at the beginning of the fucking podcast? Well, the tagline to that is it's not really rapid and it's barely even news. So if it was real news, it wouldn't belong there at all. Uh, in the enough. rapid 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 yeah, fire fair. news, we, we, we managed expectations with that segment. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the story is that he has been charged 
over comments he made in Portuguese to a television camera after his side's win over Newcastle. He used abusive, insulting, and improper language. After the game, he said he could cope with the manhunt against him and his team. Blah, blah, blah. blah. So he's been charged, and he'll probably be suspended. Because those types of charges almost always go through, especially against Mourinho. That's good, because it had been about two weeks since he'd been like in, in major controversy and in media. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. doesn't bode well for Chelsea, because if he's not there, United have to be able to attack and look good, no. right? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, that's true. You can't keep a good man down. How do you feel about this uh, fixture, Oscar? Because, I mean, you might, you've you definitely still got some latent love for, for Mourinho, haven't you? So I do, yeah, a lot, actually. Yeah. But Man United is the sports team I hate the most of any team in the entire world. In any sport. So I want to crush them till they are all crying and then bottle up the tears of the children <laughs> from Manchester and bathe and in put it. put them in my satisfying bastard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll be a... <laughs> That'll be a, a satisfying bastard as opposed to suffering they, they would be your bitters. The bitter they tears. They would be my bitters, yeah. Mm. The bitter tears of crying children from Manchester as we crush them 6-0. Um, no, I always just want to destroy them. I don't even want to, like, I don't want it to be a good match. Fuck it. I just want to, like, break a few legs, make them look bad, have <laughs> okay, Hazard no. dribble around everybody and make them look like assholes, and then score 100 goals. All right, fucking Evan Drago. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, we're not an anti-North podcast. Just to be clear. <laughs> oh. Well, one of us lives in the North, so it couldn't be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we are anti-Man United, though, right? No one likes Man United. I'm definitively anti-Man United, yeah. Fuck Unabashedly Man so. Man United and Liverpool. That's the like, Asian market gone. It's all right, though, because he wins them back with the Asia trophy. Uh, of course he does, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Do you think Chelsea Man United will be good? or? Yeah, 4-0 Chelsea. Yeah, I see you smashing them. I mean, it's 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 a spectacle, isn't At it? At home, hopefully? early kickoff. A nice bookend to that day, actually, because you've got Chelsea Man United. That will be 4-0. And then at 5.30 or 12.30 for you, Oscar? 12.30, yeah. That, yeah. Bang, nailed it. Um, you've then got Liverpool-Huddersfield, which will probably be about 17-0. And in the middle, you've got Man City-Burnley. <laughs> which will be like sort of about 12-0. Yeah, and at the Etihad too. So like Burnley is just going to get fucking destroyed. Oh, my God. Dude. Liverpool, though, I don't know if you guys have seen the injury reports. Liverpool are missing yeah. Salah, Mane, and Naby Keita. And Firmino might yeah. be leaving to Barcelona. <laughs> so like... They're playing Huddersfield. That's why I, I factored in those injuries <laughs> yeah. to the 17-0 scoreline. Yeah, fair enough. Well, we're we're recording on Tuesday night. And as it stands, I think Sal- the rumours are that Salah's going to be okay uh, uh, for the game. Anfield Express on Twitter and a couple of others who were recently um, reliable have said he's going to be okay. But Mane's got a thumb injury or something that looks like he's going to be I don't out. know what That's it is. Right. I just he thought just, he was injured. Yeah. As long as he doesn't handball it, he's fine. Yeah, <laughs> there was some x-ray about his thumb knocking about that says it's going to be him out. But yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, their third string should be able to beat Huddersfield. So still not. Yeah, I mean, Shakiri comes in off the bench and he's yeah. very, very good. Good form as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that should be a bunch of... Uh, devastating losses yeah. anything with like the bottom 14 teams that look good hang on oh, Cardiff Fulham Mitro will not only be on fire he will be an absolute blazing inferno and he will set light to Warnock's hair and with his backdraft with his good backdraft film. Good, good film yeah um, anything that sounds also like vaguely amusing involving a fart uh, is also good for me <laughs> <laughs> oh terrible backdraft um, <laughs> sorry about that so yeah that one Mitro five goals done well and just the one match on Sunday Palace Everton do you guys do you think uh, Palace on the road they'll score a few and actually no, win just spare a thought for the fact that I'm going to be watching that with my infant daughter newborn her first experience slowly crushing the expectations out of her life <laughs> <laughs> like any good parent should do yeah yeah, you've got to, like say, manage expectations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't set that. Don't set that bar too high, Ian. Three nil, Palace. Oh fuck! Don't. <laughs> How? How is that? That's not even physically feasibly possible. If you can explain and justify that to me, I will. No, nope. colour me impressed. <laughs> no. uh, Sacco hat trick. Clearly, that would be a <laughs> very me. Palace thing to do. 
That'd be a miracle. That would be equal to the Danny Butterfield hat trick of yeah, whenever it was. Palace have one of the best fullbacks in the league. I don't know if you Chuck, you texted or tweeted his uh his radar. Stat fact. Juan Bissaka is amazing. He's gonna be like picked up by a much better club next season right away. His stats are. I don't phenomenal. know. I don't know because like I think the whole time Zaha's at the club, like Juan Bissaka will stay because he can see the progression and the love because he's he's done the exact same thing and they're very very similar players and he's had like some good coaching from people like like Townsend has really looked after him and and helped him to progress and yeah his his stats are obscene so I think if we were going to cash in on one we'd probably end up cashing in on both either way and then we wouldn't spend the money and then we just get relegated um, <laughs> but then championship championship and I bloody love the championship so I'd love to be in the championship Hey, you guys could be oh, playing each other next great. season. Who knows? Oh. <laughs> no, nah, it won't oh. be next season. It'll be like the uh, season after. Well, we'll miss each other. We'll be like ships in the night. I was going to say, we only ever have one season in the championship, so don't get excited. That's though. all you got that's, in you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's the only chance. It's been a while. Uh, At Quinton Stanley on Saturday, though. <laughs> Jesus, that's a team name that just makes no fucking sense as well. <laughs> Oh dear. All the other teams are going like, right, what can we do? Well, there's United's taken, City, Town. What should we call Accrington? Stanley, you got any ideas? Hold on a minute. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, like after Accrington Stanley, you then got Sheffield. It's like, well, we've already got United. Pfft, it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> why not let's do that did they play all their games on Wednesdays actually yeah. that's one Dave Matteo let's ask Dave Matteo a question because weirdly he is a Sheffield Wednesday fan well hang on what? literally the only I one I know that really yeah um, why I, I've got a question for Dave why, why, the why fuck Sheffield you... <laughs> Wednesday because I can't even be bothered to google it can't but... be bothered wasting my time I'm a father now guys I've got better things to do I want to know from Dave why, faced with all the choices you had, you went with Sheffield Wednesday. That That is an interesting choice for a foreign fan. And yet, kind of Australian. Like, I kind of re- makes sense for an Australian person <laughs> to be like, yeah, that's the team. That one. Why? Wow. Why not? I don't know. Bloody like Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> And you don't have to bleep that one because it's an Australian accent and that is a term of endearment there. So that's fine. I'm probably going to bleep it. (laughs) You fucking coward. (laughs) That's the second time you've called me a coward for not leaving stuff in. I've called you a coward many times. (laughs) And on that note, Chuck's got to get back to cleaning diapers. Uh, Ian's got to get back to, uh, I don't know, recreating Shakespeare plays. Something. <laughs> and I've got to go eat, you know, 90 You've got to go create a suffering bastard and make yourself a maple butter blondie. How about that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we're all so going to do. It's been a pleasure. Love a good mailbag episode. It's always a good time. If you happen to make it to the end, congratulations. Yeah, well fucking done to hell. you. Lord, you're, you're, you're on like the, the level of, I don't know, you're beyond us. Just, just if, if you have made it, just turn off. Just unplug your headphones. Go outside. All right. Ah, uh, shit outside. Just. All oh, right. Stay inside. Stay with us. Go back. What you should do is reopen the app. Go podcast addict, Stitcher, Acast, Spotify, whatever it is. Go back to episode two and listen to that because <laughs> we always enjoy it when that gets a little bump. And because Ian realised the reason why that episode always <laughs> gets a little bump. Yeah. So this was a this was an absolute epic bit of production from me in that we were constantly wondering why on our download numbers episode two kept getting downloaded all the time oh why oscar likes the episode for, for clarity knows. if you are a new listener episode two was during when we were covering the world cup and it's yep. us analyzing groups e to h yep it's a it preview world cup of preview. the world cup yeah yep and still now it gets downloads turns out it's because i had the wrong itunes link on the show notes so every, all the iTunes links on the show notes were going straight to episode two and uh, possibly artificially inflating those figures a little bit. So, yeah, go back and listen to that. And we'll know because we, we'll check. And we've got your IP addresses because we've there's some sort of, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm very tired. 
<laughs> oh, that's all right. Mate, yeah. the fact you turned up is fucking incredible. Yeah, props, man. Mad props to well you. Well done, man. Thank you very much. Well, we'll see you And congratulations, next week. Chuck, on behalf of the whole Mophead listener community, I'm sure. You've had some messages already from them. Yeah, yeah, it's been very nice, so... Right. Yeah, go get back to little baby Jessica, and we'll see you uh, <laughs> next oh, week. Oh, fucking <laughs> God, I hate you so much. Alana Pardew Bailey. You're both a bunch of... <laughs>